Okay, so in this session, I actually just want to touch on the Exchange 2010 high availability. Um, a lot of people are talking about it, what's changed, how's it evolved from 2007. And so I just want to actually run through what we get with 2010 and how it's changed from what we have today. And maybe there's things that we can be doing today that will ease our migration to 2010 in the future. And in a lot of ways, as we'll see, 2010 is actually simpler than what we have today. And they've really unified all the different high available technologies. So I guess what makes the most sense is to quickly look at what we do have today. So really with Exchange 2007, um, we have single copy cluster. And this is what we had with Exchange 2003 as well. Essentially, we can have two or more Exchange servers. The mailbox database sits on some kind of shared storage, a SAN, whatever. One of them is active, one passive, one more from a clustered mailbox service. And then clients connect through, access their mail. If this node goes down, this guy becomes the active, and this guy offers the service to the mailbox database. Obviously, the issue here is that we have redundancy from a server failure, but only one copy of the data. So that was single copy cluster. Then with Exchange 2007, we got new options. We had cluster continuous replication. And the idea here is that, again, we have two nodes. These are in a Microsoft cluster. And they each have their own copy of the mailbox database. And again, one's active, one is passive. But this time what happens is we basically ship the logs from this guy. The one meg transaction logs get shipped over to the other server and then played into that database. So now we not only have high availability from a server failure, we have multiple copies of the data. So we have full redundancy. This doesn't have to be direct attached storage. It could be a SAN. The important thing really though is to not place both of these copies of the database on the same SAN then once again, you're introducing a single point of failure. So that was cluster continuous replication. What was added to this though, is obviously this is within a site. Um, Active Directory is using a failover cluster. Now we can span multiple IP subnets in Windows Server 2008, but it primarily is it's left to be within a single Active Directory site. So what was added was standby continuous replication. And this is then additional server or multiple additional servers, and he also has his own copy of the mailbox database, and he also receives these copies of the transaction logs. The advantage of this guy, he's not part of a failover cluster, so he can be in a different uh, geography, typically a disaster recovery location, and this is more of a manual failover. So if this site went down, I actually have to run commands to actually bring this SCR online and redirect users to actually point to this server. So that was standby continuous replication. So we really have three main types of high availability. So where are we going with Exchange 2010? Well essentially we've got a unification of cluster continuous replication and standby continuous replication. So the key of those technologies, if we remember, they both have their own copy of the database and they ship the transaction logs between them. And so what we now have is we have these things called database availability groups. So we just have multiple servers and within those we have multiple databases. So database one, database two, database three. And on this server, maybe we have a copy of database one as well and a copy of database three. On this, and also maybe we have database four. On this guy, maybe we have two, three, and four, etc. And we can have up to 16 servers in a database availability group. Now, it still is using Microsoft failover clustering behind the scenes, but you never see it. I don't have to specifically go and add quorum configuration. I don't have to worry about heartbeat networks. It's all automatic. Behind the scenes, it's actually using a file share witness for the quorum. 
um, whenever I go and create one of these. And that's the only hint you ever see. When you create a database availability group, it actually does ask you, hey, where do you want the file share witness stored? So it's really the only thing you see. But when you install Exchange 2010, there's no special setup option now if we want a clustered mailbox server, is it an active or passive? We just installed Exchange 2010. And we can add and remove servers from a database availability group pretty easily. We just run some commandlets and we're up and running. The other cool thing is these do not have to be within a single physical location. These can be spread wherever I want. I can have two of them in one location, others in completely separate, maybe a disaster recovery location, whatever. And I just say which databases I want replicated to which servers. The, the key thing is here that this database availability group is really defining the area of replication and it's at a database level I can configure the high availability. So there is a special component as part of the database availability group um, called the Active Manager and that's really the brains of the high availability. So the Active Directory is used to store all this sort of static configuration for Exchange but it's the Active Manager that stores the more um, I guess changeable dynamic information and he's the brain that says which copy of a database should be the active. So like what we had before, here I've got let's say three copies of database one spread over my four servers in my database availability group. Only one of them is active. The others are passive, so say this one is the active one. The others are just receiving transaction logs in the same manner we had with CCR and SCR. So this gives us a much better granularity of failover. It's not necessarily every database on this server fails over to this server. It, I can actually say, well, activate this instance of database one, activate that instance of database three, go to this instance of database two. And I simply run a PowerShell commandlet when I want to add an additional replica of one of these databases. It's very, very flexible and very granular control. Um, I can have as many passive copies of a database as I have nodes in the, <laughs> nodes in the cluster, bad, uh, in the database availability group, minus one. So effectively, if I have four nodes here, I can have one active, and then I can have up to one passive on each additional node in the cluster. So if there's four, no four nodes in the database availability group, I can have one active and up to three passive. The whole local continuous replication technology we had in Exchange 2007, which is when I had a server and it effectively could have two copies of the same database and it sent copies between them, that's gone. So that does not exist in 2010. So LCR, it's gone. The other thing that's gone, if you're noticing this model, remember each of these have their own copy, their own storage for the databases is a single copy cluster. The idea that multiple nodes share one copy of the mailbox database is gone. Each of these guys has their own copy of database one and database two and database three. This guy has its copy of one, three, and four. There's no shared storage in here. Again, you can use a SAN, but again, you just don't want to store different copies of the same database on the same SAN you're removing your high availability, you're introducing a single point of failure. Um, storage groups have gone in this model. So it used to be with 2007, we would put one database in each storage group because that was the requirement for CCR, SCR and LCR to enable that replication. Because that's all we have now in 2010, they just got rid of storage groups. Databases now just exist at an organizational level. There's, there's no concept of that storage group anymore. 